in spirit we join you and the present community that accompanied you welcomed you acclaimed you and prayed to you loudly as hosanna to the son of david and so in spirit we are with them and with you as we begin this holy week may this week be a time of intimate association with you for us meditating on your passion on the lessons that you teach us through the parables on your love manifested through the passion voluntarily undergone and we rejoice with you through the resurrection and the fruit of the resurrection in jesus name we pray amen let us begin our, our procession by singing hosanna hosanna in the highest hosanna hosanna in the highest let us sing together and we would go from this gate and come back from main gate come hosanna 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 from that side welcome
her to the Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet Hosanna's ring. Thou art the King of Israel, thou David's royal son, who in the Lord's name, the blessed one. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom our hearts are open, all the desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us worship our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the King of kings and Lord of lords, who entered into the Jerusalem victorious King. Now he has entered into our hearts as a victorious the Lord of lords and King of kings. So let us receive that King in our, in our lives and rejoice with him today. So I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. So let us worship the Lord with uh, rejoicingly and glorifying our Lord Jesus Christ.
older people all together we bring glory and honor to you you are worthy of all our praises you are worthy of all our thanksgivings you are worthy of all our all our uh, praise and worship lord accept our praise and worship and please come into our hearts please come into our hearts and you be a leader you be a lord to each one of us he is lord he is lord he is risen from the dead he is lord every knee shall bow every tongue confess that jesus christ is lord Father, glory and honor to you. We accept you as our Lord. We confess you that you are our Christ and Savior. We bow down before you and we worship you. And we we give all the glory and honor to you. This morning, we present. ourselves as a living sacrifice unto you please accept us and use us and let your name be glorified through our lives in jesus precious name we offer this offer this worship to you amen so let us pray together the collect almighty and ever ever living god in your tender love for the human race you sent your son our savior jesus christ to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross giving us the example of great humility mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen please remain standing so let us have a responsive psalm psalm 118 verses 19 to 29 
Uh, the responsive reading is taken from Psalms 118, verses 19 to 29. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray. Give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Be Bind the festival sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Uh, let's read the last verse together. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Glory be to the Father, unto the Son, unto the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please be seated for the second reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 50 to 58. The New Testament reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 to 58. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 to 50 to 58. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must be put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on the immortality, then shall come to the pass the saying that it is written, Death is swallowed up in the victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory to our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the Gospel reading. The Gospel reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 19, verses 28 to 40. Luke, chapter 19, verses 28 to 40. And when he had said these things, he went on head, ahead, going up to Jerusalem, when he drew near to Bethpage and Bethany at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village in front of you, where on entering you will find a colt tried, on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You, you shall say this, the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went away and found it, just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owner, owner said to them, Why are you untying the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus, and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. 
And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. As he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. You answered, he answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. This is the gospel of Christ. Please be seated. So now let us listen to God's word. Reverend Dr. Vinay Kumar Samuel would uh, share the God's word with us. Dear friends, I am not in Bangalore, still in uh, Oxford, and we should be back in uh, Bangalore in two weeks time. But I am going to share God's word with you from Oxford and uh, greet you on uh, Palm Sunday as we celebrate Jesus as our King, who comes riding as the King into Jerusalem. Our theme today is not the one that was originally published. What I thought we will deal with is a passage from John 12, primarily, and then moving on to John 19, which really encapsulate, brings together the whole idea of how people at that time responded to Jesus as King. So let us bow our heads in prayer. Lord Jesus, you are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. But in humility, you rode a donkey into Jerusalem, your city, the city of God. People sang hosannas and said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who is the king of Israel. You were received as a king. But a few days later, you were crucified as a criminal. Help us as we explore the choices you gave people to make at that time. Help us to make our choice as we choose who is going to be the king of our lives. We pray in your precious name. Amen. It's very interesting that the account given to us in John's Gospel about the triumphal entry about uh, Palm Sunday is, is about different groups of people receiving Jesus. Let us begin with the disciples. It's chapter 12 of John. It says, the next day the great crowd had gathered. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, meeting, meet him shouting, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. At first, his disciples did not understand any of this. 
only after Jesus was glorified, that is, when he ascended to heaven after the resurrection, they realized that these things had been written. That means they were predicted, prophesied about him, and that's why they happened. Now the crowd, it talks about the crowd was with Lazarus. And how did the crowd respond? Then it talks about the Pharisees in verse 19. So the Pharisees said to one another, see, this is getting us nowhere. Look, the whole world has gone after him. And then later we will see in John chapter 19, what the chief priest and the Sadducees say. What this incident or this event of Palm Sunday places before the crowd there and before us is that we must choose our king. Who will be the king that these people will choose? The disciples, it says, had been with Jesus. The disciples, it says, had been with Jesus Uh, John 12, verse 37, after, even after Jesus had done all these miraculous signs, it says, they had seen earlier, they had seen Lazarus raised from the dead. They had seen Jesus as not just a man, not just a prophet, but as God himself. And they were beginning to get that sense. And so the choice had to be made now when he publicly announces, and he's now public, and you have to make a public choice. The choice is really a public choice. And you have to make a choice. Do you follow Jesus? Or are you say, no, I'm not so sure, I'm not so sure. And that's a tragedy with the disciples. They, even though the choice was very clear, because it was public, Jesus, did not reject the acclamation of the people when they said, blessed is the king of Israel. Blessed are you who comes in the name of the Lord. He didn't say, no, 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 no. He accepted it. But the disciples were unsure. They were standing on the sidelines and they were unsure. The choice was clear. Why did they not choose? Because it would have been a costly choice for them. What would it have meant? They would have been arrested along with Jesus. And possibly some of them, if not all of them, would have been crucified alongside him. So it was an extremely costly choice. And therefore they were unsure. So for the disciples who knew him for three years, saw him, heard his teaching, heard and saw with their own eyes miracles, even raising of the dead, still were unsure and couldn't commit. It's a clear choice. It's a costly choice, but it was difficult to commit. Now that is really the challenge to Christians all the time. For us in our lives, Constantly are asked to commit to Jesus' kingship, Jesus' rule in our lives. And we say, can I, can I, can I? We have far more questions. We are far more uncertain. And, and I think because, mainly because we are not quite sure what cost we have to pay. We know we have to pay some cost, but we're not willing. But those who are willing and commit themselves God uses them in a wonderful way. Oh, it's costly for them. They pay a huge price. But those are the disciples who carry the cross and who follow him. Sadly, not one disciple, not one out of the 12 was willing to go with him. It's only his mother and possibly a few women. They were willing to pay the price. They were willing to pay for the price. That's the first one. 
the disciples. They, it gives the impression they did not understand. I think they understood too well, but it was too costly. The ordinary people, the crowd, the crowd knew because it says in, again, John chapter 12, the crowd, they had heard many people because they had heard what he had, that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. Now the crowd was with him, verse 17, when he called Lazarus from the tomb. The crowd knew. He raised Lazarus from the dead. They knew very, very well. And yet not one out of the crowd was willing to say, if this is God, only God could do something like that, why don't we commit ourselves to this God? They were still waiting on the sidelines. Many times when God is very real, manifests himself, we still are unsure and unable to commit. And the crowd just watched. It was all a spectacle for them. For the crowd, Jesus and his kingship was a spectacle. Just like it's a spectacle today in many kingdoms where kings are there. And I mean, there are a lot of people who love the queen in England, but primarily the entire royalty is a spectacle. I mean, they do some good things and they also do some uh, things which are quite shameful for them and sad for them, but it's a spectacle. It's a big story. That everybody talks about it's a spectacle. There is hardly any real commitment to any of them, really. Maybe a little bit to the queen. I doubt very much by a number of people. But I doubt very much they want her to rule their lives. No, no, no. No. But here we have, here we have the crowd. Here we have the disciples who knew him and who the call was very clear. You are the king of Israel. We need to commit to you as king, as our king. Then we have here the Pharisees in verse 19. The Pharisees say, the whole world has gone after him. The Pharisees say, he, we are trying to destroy him. We are trying to discredit him. And yet the whole world has gone after him. And yet they will not think again because they had decided very early that Jesus was wrong. Jesus could not be trusted. Jesus was not from God. They were the typical anti-believers. They had typical people who had decided against Christ. Quite a lot of them. And they were only trying to prove that they were right. Jesus was all the time proving that they were wrong. Every time. All the time they were trying to make sure that Jesus was wrong and not them. And they failed and failed. In spite of failing many, many times. Every time when they tried to prove Jesus is wrong and we are right, they still refused. And there are people like that who want to prove God is always wrong. God will always, you can never trust God. God will always, will always uh, be in trouble. God will never come to our help. Why do you trust God? Let us do this. Let us do that. That deep distrust of God, deep rejection of God continues. There are people like that. God again and again proves that he is real. He enters into people's life. He is true and they are wrong. But they will not give in. And that was the choice they made. Then we had the Greeks. In John chapter 12, we had a very interesting a group. A group of Greeks. These are complete outsiders who had heard about Jesus and they came in and they wanted to see Jesus, it says in verse 21. But then Jesus replies in a very, very enigmatic way. That means a very mysterious way and suggests that 
what they are looking for is a, is a kind of king that Jesus is not. Jesus was actually going to die. Here was someone who was going on his way to the cross. He was on his way to his death. He was going to be buried and then he will rise again. They must believe that the burial, his death was not the last word on him. They have to believe just his words that death was not the last word. There will always be eternal life with him. Even if it looks death, it starts with death. It was a difficult thing for Greeks to believe something so contradictory to their beliefs and understanding, something so different to the way they understood God, religion, philosophy, everything else. And so Jesus was right in saying, I don't think they'll understand. I don't think I can explain it to them. It has to happen in history and then they will know. So Jesus was right in saying, no explanations. They must see for themselves. Sometimes God wants us to see his kingship. He won't explain his kingship to us. Who is he to explain his kingship to us? He is God. We have to accept, see how his kingship works, how it is expressed in, in our world, how it works out in our world. And then, yes, you have a right to say, you are really king and will accept you. Then we have the other, which is to me the more, the more terrible ones, the Sadducees and chief priests in 19. You know, and I have always found that a, a terrible statement. Now, let, let me read that to you, 1915. Pilate places Jesus before the crowd, before the chief priests and the Sadducees, everybody else, the, the chief priests, the priests and the Sadducees, the religious establishment. And he says, here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify. Then Pilate says to them, shall I crucify your king? And what do the chief, what does the chief priest say? We have no king but Caesar. The, this in the whole of the Bible for me, this is the most wicked statement. It ranks even in my mind much worse than the very first sin that Adam and Eve committed. Here is a guy who's wearing the robes like me of a religious leader. Here is a guy who has seen what the Romans have done to their people. They have kept them in subjugation. And most of the Jews were at least very, 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 very unhappy with the Romans and the Roman rule. There were quite a few who tried to overthrow it and were killed. This chief priest says, oh, we have no king but Caesar. It's only Caesar who is our king. What a terrible thing to say. It's like saying the Satan is our king. What rubbish. What made them do that? Their hatred of Jesus was so deep. Their fear of Jesus was so complete, so terrifying, that they were willing to say, our only king is Caesar. And that's what some, we do sometimes. We reject God, we are angry with God. We reject the real true God and pick up anything. It's like some of our people going to the people who persecute Christians and saying to them, you are our Anadatha, you are our gods, you are our rulers. Come on. 
what shame did they have? The absolute no shame. What a compromise with power. What compromise with power. The rulers, and they said, who can give them power, prestige, and wealth? That is what. What, what would Jesus give them? Jesus would give them eternal life. Jesus would give them God, real God. And these religious leaders, instead of choosing God, what did they choose? They choose power, prestige, status, wealth. That is the tragedy of the Sadducees. That's a tragedy of the church, Orthodox Church in Russia, which chooses Putin and supports him even as he kills children and innocent people, massacres them in Ukraine. That's the tragedy. That's the tragedy of Christians many, many times. We choose the wrong kind of rulers. So what does it mean for our lives? First, do we need a king in our lives? Yes. Why do we need a king in our lives? We need authority. We need assurance. We need direction and a kingdom, a space of safety and growth. Okay. We need a king. Even modern people need a king. That's why, for example, the Americans six years ago, five, six, seven years ago, chose Trump. I never believed they would ever choose Trump, but they said, he is the kind of king we want. Why did they choose him? I wonder. They chose him. They needed someone because they had their own plans. No, no. And they said, he is the one who will fulfill our plans. So we need a king in our lives, but the kings we choose are those who will enable us to be king of our own lives. They will not, they, we won't let them rule our lives. We want them to support the way we rule our own lives. Make it easy for us to live the way we do. That's why they chose Trump. They will, a lot of people, Christians chose Trump because they said he will do, he will help us to be better Christians. Quite frankly, that was wrong. We do need a king in our lives. For us, for our lives, we do need the one who brought this world into being, who continues to direct this. If it is not God, we will choose God's substitutes, ourselves first, because we want to rule our own lives. We want to be king of our own lives, and we want someone to support us in being kings of our own life. We want a God who will just say, okay, all that you're doing, I'm with you. Whatever you do, I'm with you. Whatever you do, I'm with you. I'll save you from terrible problems, but do whatever you think is best for your life. That's the God we want. And that's the God we want. Other people choose money, fame, anything else. All these things which rule, rule our lives. The Sadducees and chief priests wanted Caesar, power, prestige, and wealth. The disciples sat on the sidelines because they didn't want to pay the price because they knew to take Jesus as the king of their lives, they have to pay a price, even though they knew he was God and they were unwilling to pay the price. Then, later they did, when the Holy Spirit came upon them. The crowds were very uncertain. The Pharisees were different. So, who made the right decision? As far as the biblical record goes, in chapter 12 and 19 of John, I see that not one person made the right decision. And that's what saddened me as I read these passages trying to prepare. Not one person. 
very few people make the right decision. When it comes to saying, Jesus, your king of my life. Oh, we say those words. We sing it again and again and again in our church services. But really saying it, we are more like the disciples waiting, waiting to see what does it mean for me? What does it do to me? How, how much should I pay? Will it get me what I want? All those doubts, uncertainties. Are there. Maybe only Mary knew and a few women. We are asked to choose. Jesus came and said, okay, here I am. This is who I am. And very clear John 12 says, as he tells, as he says in response to the Greeks, the son of man, the king will die. He'll be buried. He'll be invisible. You'll be left alone on your own, fearful. But keep trusting him. He will rise and eternal life will be yours. He has power over our lives. He is the first and the last word. We will serve him. That's what they needed to say. Paul did later. He started, struggled, struggled, fought him. But when the time came, he realized that he had to say, you're going to rule my life, Jesus, and gave it. And so did the disciples afterwards when they began to realize what was happening. So this, this Palm Sunday is the challenge for us. Are you going to let Jesus be the real ruler of your life? You want to say to him, he's the first and the last. He will rule my life. I'm not going to rule myself. My family won't rule my life. Nobody else will rule my life. My desires won't rule my life. He will be the king of my life. He'll be the king of our family. He'll be the king of our community. And we are prepared to pay the price because we know that in the final analysis, his kingdom will prevail. He is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. That's how we start this week. So may God guide us and bless us as Jesus challenges us throughout this week to make that choice. Who is going to be your king? He's like Pilate. He's placed Jesus before the crowd, before the people. Jesus is placed before us. Will we, like the disciples, like the Pharisees, like of the worst possible people, the chief priest, and say, no, 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 we want, we want Caesar, the murderer, as our king. Or will we say, Jesus, you with a crown of thorns on your head, carrying a cross, bloodied, going to the cross and dying and being buried, you are still our king. We choose you because you will be resurrected and you will rule the world. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we are given these choices sometimes every day, but there are times when we are given these choices in a very particular way where we have to decide for our lives in the deepest possible way how important you are in our lives, how you will rule our lives. Help us humbly and quietly to say, Jesus, be the Lord of my life. Jesus, you're my king. Lord Jesus, King Jesus, you're my king. Of everything I am, I have. Amen. Jesus, you're my king. Lord Jesus, King Jesus, you're my king. Of everything I am, I have. Amen.
please rise and we renew our faith in the triune God in the words of the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and buried he descended into hell the third day arose again from the dead he ascended into heaven I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church the unity of all Christians the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of our bodies and life everlasting amen please be seated for the notices from today our holy week has started so from monday to thursday we have a regular uh, services at 6:30 in the evening so reverend uh, vinay kumar samuel is going to speak to us from monday to wednesday so on thursday it would be a Maundy Thursday, which is a Holy Communion service. So I would request all the church members, please join and come together to worship Lord Jesus Christ. On Good Friday, on Friday, Good Friday, our service would begin at uh, 12 o'clock, 12 p.m. So I would request all of you to please prepare and come for the Good Friday service. An Easter Sunday sunrise service at 5.30 early in the morning. Please prepare for the early morning service, sunrise service, followed by fellowship breakfast. So we would uh, give you some more details uh, once we plan together. So now, uh, every Sunday, um, so baptism classes would be taking uh, by four, in the evening, 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock. So because of unavailability of uh, baptism tank in Campus Crusade, so our baptism uh, uh, would be uh, during the time of Pentecost. So kindly prepare all the candidates uh, for the baptism. So every Sunday uh, in the evening, 4 o'clock, please come for the baptism classes. Then one more announcement that so we have, you have taken all the pledge cards and uh, dumb boxes for do, during this Lenten service, during Lenten period. So whatever you would like to give to the Lord as you pledge to God, please offer your offerings and the dumb boxes during this Holy Week. If you want to bring on Good Friday, you can bring back to the church. Or if you want to bring on su Sunday, so you are most welcome to bring your uh, offerings to the Lord and also we have a um, uh, online uh, payments to, you can offer your online payments so on, at the back so kindly make sure that you would give to the Lord Jesus Christ these are the notices is there any notices that you would like to announce ma'am Becky ma'am We are a community called to pray. Pray for ourselves, pray for the world. Pray particularly for the less fortunate ones. Pray for peace, brotherhood all over the world. For the candidates who are preparing themselves for baptism as well as for confirmation, we pray, God, that you will attune their wills to yours, their hearts to yours, their thought patterns to yours, their ways to your ways, so that they identify themselves with you with your cause and mission. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
we also pray god at this time for leaders all over the world leaders of countries presidents prime ministers their ministerial colleagues leaders in various provinces and states the chief ministers their cabinet colleagues the ias ips and the cadder and other cadders of that rank who carry out the plans projects visions of those political leaders bless them god with your wisdom sense of responsibility spirit of impartiality with a total unselfishness and commitment lord in your mercy we also pray god for all church leaders people who take various responsibilities within the church from the top to the very last ones ordained ministers lay leaders we also pray for evangelists and missionaries who work in very hostile conditions we also pray god for all forces that stand against your gospel and its spread melt their hearts may they also be docile to your promptings and amend their ways lord in your mercy we pray god also at this time for all students at various levels whose future is uncertain who are anxious and their parents too who are anxious about their future may nor may normalcy return totally to the academic world may regular curricula be followed may regular classes take place may children learn more lord in your mercy we pray god for the situation that is worsening day by day within sri lanka and the political turmoil in pakistan and many leaders predicting not far from now similar situation can occur also in our own country lord set right things may leaders who have landed their own countries into problems give way to others may good leaders rise and be chosen to rule to develop the well-being of their own people 
Lord, in your mercy, we come to you, God, once again for the restoration of total peace between Russia and Ukraine. Thousands of human lives have been lost. Crores worth of property lost. Many young people's future spoiled, hindered, made uncertain. In that spirit, in that situation of disturbance, anarchy, we appeal to you. Set right things, God. May your people live in peace and harmony. Lord, in your mercy, we also pray for all those who are unwell in our families, in our church circles, among our relatives, among the aged who feel lonely and who find no one to look after them. For all war victims who have been maimed, we especially pray for their well-being, for our own personal needs, that for all of us this holy week and the celebrations that go with it be a means of God's grace. Lord, in your mercy, as we are about to break the bread, realizing our own unworthiness, our sinfulness, our frequent ungodly desires, thoughts, actions, we confess our, our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against others in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who forgive one another and truly repent of their sins, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Please rise. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another the sign of peace. So children of Jerusalem, so children of Jerusalem, sang the praises of Jesus name, children of modern days of our Savior Christ, as they sing the song, our regular offerings and our tithes to the Lord.
All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Almighty God, creator of the world, we ask you to accept these offerings of bread and wine for the glory of your name and the good of your people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is in it's right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who by his grace fulfilled all the prophecies about him in holy scripture from his birth in Bethlehem till his entry into Jerusalem, whom also we now bless with those who met him with psalms and with hosannas. Therefore, Therefore we, we praise, praise you, you joining, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all, all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Owner of all things, we thank you for giving up your only son to die on the cross for us who owe you everything. Pour your refreshing spirit on us as we remember him in the way commanded through these gifts of your creation. On the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread, gave you thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me amen his body was broken for us in the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks he gave it to them saying drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me christ has died christ is risen christ will come again we are brothers and sisters through his blood we have died together we live raised together and we live together Therefore, Heavenly Father, hear us as we celebrate this covenant with joy and await the coming of your Savior, Jesus Christ. He died in our place, making it a full atonement for the sins of the whole world, the perfect sacrifice once and for all. You accepted his offering by raising him from death and granting him great honor at your right hand on high.
This is the feast of victory. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. The cup of blessing which we bless. Draw near with faith and receive the body and blood of Christ. Christ is alive forever. come forward. May the body broken and the blood shed be a channel of reconciliation and peace. Amen. Go into the world to live the message of Palm Sunday procession, namely peace and reconciliation.
may the body broken and the blood shed be a channel of god's peace and reconciliation go into the world to reflect and live that peace and reconciliation Jesus said whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them having now with faith received this holy sacrament let us give thanks to God almighty God we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your son Jesus Christ through him we offer you ourselves to be a living sacrifice send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory amen may the peace of god that surpasses human understanding keep your minds and hearts in the knowledge of god and of his son jesus christ and may the blessing of god almighty the father and the son and the holy spirit descend upon you and remain with you now and forever sing three stanzas for our recessional hymn 1 3 and 5 1 3 and 5 problems all our difficulties all the devil's work all our hopes let us depart please remember the palms have been procured for both the tamil worshipers and also the english congregation people so those palms Uh, that are kept apart need to be kept back for the next 